Hello again, everyone, and welcome to The Frontline with Joe and Joe. Joe Pasillo is always joined by Joe Resinello. And once more, dear friends, we are going into the breach. So we have, um, we have a good show for you, a good, discussion, uh, a good discussion today. We think you're going to enjoy it, as I said earlier um, in one of our earlier posts. We're talking about all things, you know, terrible out there. And about the only good thing going on out there is Donald Trump. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so we're going to get into a whole bunch of fun discussions. We're welcoming you live on Facebook. I have a whole bunch of new friends out there that I want to welcome and a whole bunch of new followers um, uh, of our Frontline with uh, Joe and Joe Facebook page. Please share our page, share our conversation uh, with your friends. And also remember to follow us on YouTube at the Frontline with Joe and Joe. So we are going into the breach. And Joe Resinello, where are we headed tonight? Well, we got lots of stuff, Joe, lots of stuff. I want to do uh, a little New York City and COVID-19 by the numbers to start us off. I have uh, two segments I want to uh, present, and I think it'll, uh, it'll spark a very good conversation. All right. Just a, a few facts, and that's what I do. I present that's, facts. That's how you roll. That's how I roll. New York City is the most economically unequal city in the country. It is home to 70 billionaires more than any other American city. Living among those billionaires is nearly 1 million millionaires more than any other city in the world. So a lot of rich, a lot of rich people. Oh, yes. Uh, Oh, yes. I'm not one of them. (laughs) The city has the largest homeless population of any American metropolis. The number of New Yorkers who live below the population is larger than the population of Philadelphia or Phoenix and would be the country's seventh largest city. Here's some more stats for you good people. New York State has more corona cases than any other country in the world. Mm -hmm. About half of all U.S. deaths are here in the broader New York area. There it is. What do do all those numbers tell you, Dr. Rastanello? What do all those numbers tell you? Well, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, we're at the epicenter of this bad yeah, boy. It's scary. It's a little right. bit scary to be truthful. Yeah, I mean, I'll be, be honest. I'm not that concerned for myself. Um, I'm a 49 year old man. I'm in pretty good shape. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I am concerned for my parents. I have two parents over 80. My father has Parkinson's disease. I have known a number of friends of mine who have lost parents. A friend of mine reached out to me last night. Uh, Kieran Morris, please play for his mom, Joan Morris. She passed away last night um, in Brooklyn. Uh, Kieran told me he couldn't get a priest to anoint her. He can't get a priest to say her funeral mass. And it's just sad. It's very sad. You know, that's People are dying that's alone. Listen, that to me is, is, is the saddest part of this whole thing is that I, I, I can deal with a lot. We're Americans, okay? We can deal with a lot. What I can't deal with, did you, did you see Phil, um, Governor Phil Murphy? Now, for all of you out there who don't know, uh, first time to the front line with Joe and Joe, we're Jersey guys, okay? We're from New Jersey. Did you see our governor on with Tucker Carlson the other night? My wife was telling me, he kept saying stuff like, oh, praise God. It was almost exaggerated. <laughs> for as many times as he invoked God, I wanted to jump in the screen. Says God says, "Don't kill babies, Governor Murphy." You, you get that part through your head. Oh. But aside from the fact that he he evaded so much, okay. Um, Tucker Carlson came right out and asked him. Tucker Carlson was being very respectful. All right. Tucker Carlson came right out and asked him. He says, um, "In a nutshell, why are masses?" shut down? Why are religious gatherings shut down? Now, Murphy's answer was telling, and this speaks to what you were just saying about your friend's mom not being able to get last rites. Um, you have to like make an appointment with a priest if you can even get a priest to hear your confession. Uh, Murphy said, I spoke with Cardinal Tobin. Now, catch that, Joe. I spoke with Cardinal Tobin. What he's basically saying is, don't blame me. Don't blame me. Glenn Cardinal Tobin, because he's the one who basically, when I said you have to shut down the churches, didn't even give him a fight. And you know he didn't give him a fight. But what I would say, you know, here's the thing. Like, there is some risk to older people, but I think you could could be creative. 
uh, you could have. Well, that was my point. That was my point. Did, did, did Tobin say to him, "Well, no, actually, um, uh, Governor Murphy, uh, we know how to add. We can we can add mass. We can add to the mass schedule. We can add to um, uh, infections. We can socially distance. We're going to open. We'll follow the the rules, but we're opening." My point, Joe, is that Tobin didn't do anything like that, and we know that he didn't do anything like that. Well, it's funny. Um, I didn't want to get political in our interview that we had this morning, uh, but we interviewed uh, a gentleman who served with Father Vincent Capitano, who died in the line of duty as a Marine. Um, he was also a Catholic priest. He's a servant of God on his way to become a saint, soon to be venerable, declared by the church. Um, here's a man who was on the front line, who put his life on the line and it's documented, not by us, by people who serve with them. I think a lot of our priests could do a better job. You know, they, 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 in a Korean safe manner. For instance, I read this week that Monsignor Charles Pope, who's a very good priest in the Washington, D.C. area, with a very, um, I don't know the name of the nuns. I know their habit. They wear gray with blue. It, uh, I, I, I can't think of their order, but it's, it's, I, I forgot who they are. They walk the streets of, of uh, Washington, D.C., praying the rosary. You see, that's something you can do. A priest alone can carry the monstrance with the blessed sacrament through the streets. That's something you can do. Right. You can have drive-in adoration in a parking lot. Everyone's in their car and set up the monstrance. That's right. something you can do. I, speaking for myself, I don't want to get in anyone get anyone in trouble. I received the Eucharist on on Easter Sunday, and I went to confession through my car window. Mm -hmm. um, a priest did that for me. Yeah, the don't point, mention the priest's name. I don't want to get anyone yeah, in trouble. You'll wind up getting him sent to uh, sent to Alaska. To I, I know. Total I mean, have him sent to Alaska. But you know, let's be honest. Where we are, if you are an older person, I'd say. Over 70, you have a pre-existing condition. My friend Kieran's mom, who reached out to me last night, uh, she had emphysema. Uh, she was 81, and she died. And that's not the only person that I know whose parents, uh, a, a parent has passed, a grandparent has passed. It is a serious deal if you're older. And that's by the numbers. Yeah. I yeah. want to read some more a few more statistics regarding uh, New York. I think people will be surprised by them. Real this quick, I just, want to, Joe, I just want to give a shout out to Dan's joining in. I see him in the I see him in the chat. Uh, good afternoon to you, Dan. Go ahead, Joe. This is a before I get into the stats and break it down. Um, I want to give you a little quote from uh, the good governor Andrew Cuomo. Oh. This is what he said. This is what he said. He said everyone is subject to this virus. I don't care how smart, how rich, or how powerful you think you are. Now, to some degree, that is true. Now, after I read these statistics, I think it may take the conversation in a different direction. Um, the virus is highly concentrated in the poorest Hispanic and Black neighborhoods of Queens and the Bronx. The viral death rate for Hispanics is 22 people per 100,000. For blacks, 20 per 100,000, and while the rate for whites is 10 per 100,000. Mm -hmm. For whites, even that is deceptive, given that the hot spots in the isolated Hasidic Jewish enclaves of Brooklyn versus the lack of white deaths in high income areas. Poor people are more likely to die at home than in a hospital, and so the surge in at home deaths most never tested, suggests that the death rate for the virus is being undercounted. Mm -hmm. Why do I bring this up? The poor always get the short end of the stick. The poor are getting the short end of the stick in yeah, terms of it. this virus. They live on mm -hmm. top of one another. You have Dominican communities in the Bronx. You have poor black communities in the Bronx and in Queens. They live in apartment buildings, they live in tenements, they live in projects, and they are getting devastated. This right. is a fact. In Newark, I'm sure it's the same. My friend's father, so Newark, may God yeah, rest I'm sure his soul, is pretty bad. 
my friend Ricardo Martinez's father passed away in Clara Mass Hospital, which is in, as we both know, Belleville, New Jersey, serves the greater Newark area. He said, this is two weeks ago, he said it was a disaster, the hospital. Yeah. And my, why do I bring this up? What are we doing as a society? You know, at the end of the day, this is how we will be judged, how we treat one another. Are we reaching a hand to help one another? You know, again, I'll reference Father Capadano. He didn't have to go to the Marines. He did not have to go. He went because there was a need. There is a need right now. Do you know all the soup kitchens in the city of Newark have closed except one, the Missionaries of Charity? Right. They told us that they're serving 150 to 200 people a day. Father Teresa's group, right? Correct. Right. Uh, St. Augustine's Parish down the street from the cathedral in Newark. Mm -hmm. So that is my point. What are we doing to help? That is what Christ would do. That is right. what Father Capadano did. He is going to become a saint. That is what we are all called to do because there are people who are in need. There are old people that you could pick up their food. There are old people that shouldn't have to go to the pharmacy. What are we doing to help our neighbors? That's my, that's my, my suggestion and that's my statement. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the, the problem though is we're on lockdown. We can't do anything. We're told not to do anything. Now, let's say for argument's sake, somebody called me up on the phone, an elderly person who I might know and said, Joe, can you pick up a few things at the store? Sure, I, I could do that. But as far as reaching out through the parish um, and let's say, uh, uh, you know, through, through, through our local community here to try to help people, we're all on lockdown. Can't go near anybody. That's what we're told. And I do want to make another point. I, I mean, my only point in saying that, Joe, is that's what makes it difficult because we want, we're Catholic. Most of the people watching this show are Roman Catholics, okay? We're followers of Jesus Christ. We want to serve. But in the meantime, we're on lockdown. We can't go from here to there. You barely could go to the store. And then you got, and then you got to, you know, you, you go to the store, you come home. That's what the days have been like for the last, let's say, for argument, say three, four weeks. I do want to bring up one point, though. One thing about New York, okay? In other words, the people over there always carping about Donald Trump is such a bad guy. Obviously, New York's a very liberal city, mostly liberal city. All those, all those white liberals in New York City, okay, don't think for one second they're going into Queens and Brooklyn and other parts of New York taking care of, taking care of people who are trying to take care of people who, who are needy, like a lot of the people that you mentioned earlier. They're nice and hiding themselves away. They go downstairs from their apartment buildings, they go to the local Gristini's, they pick up their, 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 their groceries and they go right back upstairs. In other words, that's all they're doing. They're a bunch of hypocrites. I don't wish them any harm, but they're a bunch of hypocrites. But what I would say is not everybody, and this includes me, um, thank God, I have not been economically affected um, for now. I still have a job. I mean, we'll see about that in December when the bank doesn't make any money. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, what are we doing economically? There are good organizations. There are things that we can do. Um, again, Christ has said this very clearly. Those who've been given much, much is expected. And while, Joe, I agree, we are in lockdown. We can't be reckless. Sometimes in life, you have to take a little bit of a chance. Um, it's like in anything. You know, I would think, you know, uh, someone posted something on social media, um, a dear friend of mine, um, it made me think. It said, if it was young people who were getting sick, you know that your grandparents would go out of your, their way to help you. But yeah. now it's the old and no one's doing anything. Yeah. You know, I've seen many old people on lines, on ShopRite by themselves. They're over 70 women. It's sad. Yeah, it's very sad. And anything that we can do within our means, we should do. We should do. Or at least when we have the opportunities to take advantage of those opportunities to help another person. Absolutely. I, I, that's why I brought up those facts and because I, I think it's important to know. All right. Well, uh, let's continue the conversation. You're at the front line with Joe and Joe, Joe Pasillo, Joe Resinello. We're on Facebook Live. We always used to go live, or at least before uh, Kung Flu, 
uh, Wuhan virus. We're going to get deplatformed for that, Joe, because we're being politically incorrect. Uh, but before then, we were doing Facebook Live uh, 8 o'clock Sunday nights. We have an opportunity to go live and uh, being socially distanced, we're using Zoom to go live on Facebook. So we're doing it in the afternoon. We find we found last week we reached a lot more people. Our video last week, I think, topped out. It was around 1,000 views. We put up an interview with Joseph Shiambra and James Bryan, all of which you can find on our page, The Frontline with Joe and Joe on Facebook. Please follow our page. All our videos are up there. They're all dated. They all have titles. You know what we're talking about. And all of our interviews, you got Jesse Romero, Teresa Bonapartis uh, from New Can uh, what was it, Joe? Entering Canaan Ministry. Um, and uh, and a whole lot. Father Don Calloway's uh, Consecration to St. Joseph. Joseph Chiambra twice, once with James Bryan and once on his own. So a lot of good content out there that we think you'll enjoy. It's definitely, definitely binge worthy. We just want to uh, a little shout out real quick. We got uh, Mike's joining us, Stephanie's joining us, Dan's already with Dan says, no doubt it's very sad the impact of deaths for old and sick um, are bad, but be careful of how they overinflate the numbers. Well, that's going to be, that's going to come out in the wash, Dan. In other words, that's all going to come out in the wash when we see exactly. I mean, people are having Joe. I don't know if you realize, a lot of people are, are going into the hospital. They might be, they might be sick with, let's just say they, they, they have, um, they have, they, they died of a heart attack or a stroke. Okay. But they tested them for coronavirus. They're putting it down as the coronavirus. Well, virus. of course it works both ways. It works you know? both ways. So we have to be careful, but we'll, We'll see. Let's just pray to Almighty God that this all that this is all done and over with pretty soon. So anyway, where are we headed next, Joe? Okay, Joseph, we're going to go to the headline. Is Pelosi also claiming Cuomo and nine other governors are sinful for reopening? Can I cut you off real quick? Sure. Can I cut you off real quick? Because this is going to speak volumes. Uh, you know, this is this is right up our alley. When Nancy Pelosi, in particular, and other Democrat politicians like. Andrew Cuomo, Chuck Schumer, um, all these people, when they say things like, use words like immoral or sinful, I'm sorry, I can't, as a human being, I can't get it out of my head. It makes me itch. <laughs> you, it makes me itch. It makes, my brains explode, as my mother would say. Your brains are going to explode. It you know, makes my me eight year old itch. Italian mother. These people have no problem with slaughtering babies in the womb, and she's using the word sinful. Having said that, continue, Mr. Resinello. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi told fellow Democrats that it was almost sinful the way that the Trump administration has handled the epidemic. Let's go to the direct quote. This is classic. I know. I can't wait. <laughs> the more misrepresentations he puts out there, the more it obscures the truth. We have to insist upon the truth, Ms. Pelosi says. What we're saying is not knowledge. It's not facts. It's not real. <laughs> and, and, and how do you how do you help how do you help it? But just, but just like from from not shaking your head, saying you're talking about facts, knowledge. It's it, it, right. You can only laugh at her. Look, they're all going to come up with their own spin as far as it goes on when things happen. Uh, who did what? When? What the president do? What they do? That's going to be all for the, 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 the spin meisters, the talking heads, all those people. Look, you can spin anything you want. Here's one thing I do know. Donald Trump is front and center in front of the American people every single day. So effectively communicating what the administration and what the entire federal government is doing that CNN has been forced by their own bias to cut away from his task force briefings because they don't want to deal with what, what is he saying that's not factual? What is he saying that's not real? No, is it, so she's delusional. But go ahead, I'm sure there's more there. Well, no, that's just the, the, the bit of the quote. What I wanted to just uh, juxtapose that with uh, some economic facts that are real. <clears throat> Last week, data released from the US Department of Labor shows that 16.8 million Americans have filed new unemployment claims within a span of three weeks. Each week shattered the previous record for new filings within a single week set in 1982 with 695,000 claims. Further, nearly a quarter of the nation's small businesses reported being less than two months away from permanent closure 
if lockdowns remain in place. According to this survey, which was published by the US Chamber of Commerce and MetLife, that's real. That's real. See? Yeah, and she, she just won't get it through her head. It, it, it is, it, it, you would have thought this woman would, and people like her would be bad enough in their support of baby killing, okay? But when they're willing to drag out this economic shutdown, when they know that this coronavirus is, is an acceptable risk for most people, and I am not downplaying the fact that people have died from it, but when you look at the numbers relative to the entire population, when you look at the numbers, one to 3% of uh, mortality rate for those people that get it. Listen, Joe, we take risks getting in our car where you have a one to 3% chance of getting in a head on collision and dying. You have it, we went through it last week, all the different activities we engage in. Just getting up and going to work is a risk. Going through a tunnel, working in Midtown Manhattan, okay, where a crane can fall on your head. We accept the risk. People like Nancy Pelosi want to prolong this lockdown. Oh, I agree. For political 100%. gain. 100%. Because you know what's going to happen? They're going to open up the economy and more people are going to die. In other words, people are going to get, some people are going to get coronavirus. And, and one to 3% of those people are going to die. And then you're going to hear people, unfortunately, some of them in the Catholic world, which I don't understand what their rationale is, okay? You're going to hear people saying, we put profits before, before human lives. And what they refuse to hear, they won't even listen to the argument by saying, if I stay in this house, okay, that I'm sitting in right now, I'm, I'm one of those unemployed people you mentioned. OK, I'm getting uh, the assistance from I work in New York. I live in New Jersey, but I'm getting assistance from New York State. The added uh, benefit and all the whatever I could get when that runs out, Joe. See, because, you know, when that when that let's say for argument's sake, if we're not opened up and I'm not back to work, at least to the point where I can make as much money as I'm, I'm, I'm taking in now on unemployment, depression sets in. I wouldn't know what to do if I can't pay the bills. These people don't realize that m many people who get depressed turn to alcohol. They turn, turn to drugs. They turn, unfortunately, uh, to suicide because they can't handle the pressure of not being able to get up and go to work. What do you have to say about that, Ms. Pelosi? What she's, you worth, say? she's worth two hundred million dollars, Joe. Right. So she doesn't give a crap. Well, she doesn't. Uh, you know, she doesn't feel that burn as you know. And frankly, I'll be honest with you, and I mean this. I actually think that if they had it their way, they could care less that this goes on till the election because it's it's something that's in their pocket that they could work towards their own favor. Joe, um, listen. If you had the same study, if you had the same amount of Corona. Um, uh, incidents, okay, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, let's say, a number of infected and the number of uh, people who died, the percentage of people who died. Um, if you had that right up until Election Day and Joe Biden won, the next day, Joe Biden, the, Joe, the Democrats would be calling for opening back up the economy. The very next day, they'd be calling for opening back up the economy. They're only doing this for political reasons. Everybody who looks at this knows that, like I said earlier, and we said last week, this is an acceptable risk. We did the lockdown. We, we got through the tsunami. We borrowed $2 trillion so that we could get working people through this. How much of that went to, how much of that went to, to large corporations and things like that? That's another story. But now it's time, okay, you, you, you flatten the curve. It's going down. It's going to continue to go down. I mean, there's so many arguments um, on both sides, when people say we have to follow facts, well, whose facts? The politically biased facts, the politically biased science, because there is such a, you would agree with me, there is such a thing as politically biased science and politically biased facts. Because they don't want to look at that. They'll drag this out for political reasons and they will crush us. And they don't care. They don't care. They I don't agree. care because they want Donald Trump out of office no matter what. They will do anything, and that is, I don't think there's a, frankly, they will do anything to get him out. And I'll be truthful with you, and I mean this. This is their last chance. Absolutely. If he wins, I fear for him. Because it's almost like they've tried everything. Right. If he wins, I, I actually fear for him. S seriously, as a human. Yeah, just from human to human, I don't know what they're going to try. Joe, they're they're leftist thugs. This is what you're dealing with. Okay, 
you know, you know, if you think for one second that these people aren't, first of all, get, just very quick, aside from Donald Trump, let's, let's, I'll stipulate that, yeah, they will do anything and, and not short of, of, of trying, to, trying to assassinate him, okay? That's how much, not just people out, out in, the, in the country. I'm not talking about, let's say, people like we've spoken about early, earlier, like uh, Bernie Sanders supporters, like Kyle Jurek and, and Matthew Weisgerber. I'm not talking about people like that. They couldn't get close to the president. I'm talking about what actually exists and everybody knows exists now. 20 years ago, you called it the New World Order. Everybody dismissed you. Everybody dismissed you as a, a conspiracy nut. Now we call it the deep state, and everybody on everybody knows there is a deep state, and they can't stand Donald Trump. That deep state has entrenched powers that he's there disrupting. They'll take him out. Another thing I wanted to mention earlier, if a million Americans had to die in Nancy Pelosi's calculation, her and her godforsaken party, so that Trump would lose the election, they would consider that an acceptable loss. They'll let America. They'll let a million Americans die if they could, if they were guaranteed to get Donald Trump out of office, and that includes you and me and our families. And that's the truth. So next time Nancy Pelosi wants to talk about sinful, she should go look in the mirror. More importantly, she should go to confession. Let's go to California, Joe. This is. Let me good. give a quick what? shout out, Joe. Let me give a quick shout out. We got uh, Jonathan just joined us, and Vinny joined us. Vinny. What's happening, brother? Go ahead. I think this is going to uh, surprise you. Um, the California governor, uh, Gavin Newsom, made a following statement. He said, Trump has met every single direct request that he was capable of meeting. Let me go to the quote. Every single direct request that he was capable of meeting, he has met. We have the USNS Mercy in California because of his direct intervention and support. Mm -hmm. 2,000 of these federal medical stations are in California as a result of his support. And so I can only speak for myself, but I have to be complimentary. Otherwise, I would be simply lying to you, misleading you. And that is a wonderful thing to be able to say. And I hope that continues. That is shocking. I'm going to say this about Gavin Newsom, just to be fair, okay? I can't stand the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand him, okay? He is the epitome of the enemy of the people as far as I'm concerned. Oh, I would agree. He's, he's everything that a Roman, a faithful Roman Catholic should detest. Dude, he's Darth abortion Vader. He's and Darth Vader. Yeah, it, radical agenda, all of it, okay? At least... He's honest. At least he has enough sense for the moment, for the moment, to put politics aside. I, from my understanding in that same interview, they were trying to, to goad him into bashing Trump, and he wouldn't do it. You want to know why? Because Trump's doing a good job. He knows it. Even Cuomo knows it in New York. Governor Murphy knows it in New Jersey. These are all Democrats. Thank God. Thank Listen. God. <laughs> But, but the thing is, they all they all know it. And what are they miss? What are they getting that the media, like CNN, what are they getting that the media is missing? They're on the ground in this struggle against this Chinese virus, and they see what the federal government, the, the kung flu, they see what the what the federal government and Donald Trump in particular is is doing for them to help them, respecting their 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 authority. By the way, also, that's another thing. Trump has said, we'll do what we can, but the governors need to do what they have to do in their own state, and we're there for backup. Gavin Newsom, that's music to his ears. They could look like heroes in California and New York and New Jersey. They'll look like heroes. So listen, at least, like I said, he's honest. And he's honest because he's telling the truth. Trump is actually doing the best job that anybody in that position right now could actually be doing. I, speaking personally, I want to mess up his hair. Who's here? Gavin Newsom and Trump. If I was at the press conference, I would give it both of them. I would just shake their hair, mess it up a little bit. The problem is, the problem is, <laughs> see, Trump, Trump's hair looks like you can mess it, like it blows in the wind. Like when you see him, like and he's on the White House lawn going to the chopper or whatever, his hair blows in the wind, right? Gavin Newsom looks like there's so much gunk in his hair. If you go to touch it and mess this hair, you're going to cut your hand. So I, it would be, I agree. It, it, it probably, it's like a shell. <laughs> it's too perfect. 
<clears throat> way too perfect. Oh, my goodness gracious. He's a, him and his, they're like Barbie dolls. I love people like that make me laugh. I, I deal with them all the time in corporate America. They're like, they have like, they're like prey mantises, their movements. They're, they're just like, they're like Barbie dolls, dude. Him and his wife. I think he has a kid named Hunter. Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh no, offense, no offense to anybody named Hunter out oh, there. Like, I, 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 you know, I mean, I, I've said before, I want to go back to names like Rocco and Vito and Sovio. Like, and like like, or John. Or John, Mike. I'm a John. I'm a Joe. <laughs> Not Hunter. Oh, Lord. So, yeah, anyway, Gavin Newsom, he gets, he gets one in the plus column for his, uh, for his honesty. Let's go to South Dakota. The Washington Post tries to pin the coronavirus spread on, on Governor Crazy Eyes Christy Nome. And this, my friends, pay, pay close attention. This is an example of fake news. So pay close attention. This Joe, I just want to, I, I, I want you to get that, but I got to tell you this because this is just way too funny, okay? <laughs> Stephen Stephen Borcher is joining us. Hey, Stephen, how you doing? Welcome to the front line with Joe and Joe. Stephen's joining. You're going to love this. You're going to love this, Garcinella. <laughs> Newsom looks like an older Jeff Spicoli from Fast Times at Richmond High. He does. He should he, just like come like out of like a VW van. <laughs> just smoke. <clears throat> so I, I wanted to throw that out. So, again, yeah, Christy Nome, who's actually, you know, this is South Dakota, am I right? Correct. She's the governor okay. of South Dakota. <clears throat> Excuse me. On Monday, the Washington Post ran an article titled, South Dakota's governor resisted ordering people to stay home. Now it is one of the large, now it is one of the nation's largest coronavirus hotspots. Wrong, wrong. There's about seven people that live in South Dakota too, by the way. The state's like- a, By the way, that was reported in the Washington Post. Correct. Okay, okay. now here's the thing. What they'll say is, no, it's a hot spot because the incidence of coronavirus relative to the overall population of the state. That's probably what they would say, because outside of that, they have no argument. They have no justification for calling South Dakota a hot spot. OK, now go ahead, I know because I know there's well, another let me, factor. Let me read in this. the facts so everyone gets because they manipulated the facts. Mm -hmm. This is the facts. The state has fewer than a thousand cases in total and six deaths attributed to the virus. Okay, that's according to the South Dakota Department of Health. The Washington Post centered their article on an outbreak of the virus shutting down the world's largest pork processor, which is Smith, Smithfield Foods in Sioux Falls, after hundreds of employees became infected. Nearly all of the infected people in the state are located in the same county as Smithfield Foods. Let me right. repeat that again. Nearly all of the infected people in the state are located in one county. Right. And here's another fact. A shutdown order would not have prevented those infections because food production is considered an essential service. Right. Therefore, Smithfield would not have been shut down. So they are full of crap. Yes. Yes. Once again. Right. And this is and this is why, number one, we always have to emphasize that Trump is right. The media in America is the enemy of the people. There's people no people. question about that. They tell the truth. No question. In the, in, the, in the political tank. The other thing is this. Look at South Dakota as a microcosm for the country. Okay. And let's say Christy Nome is running South Dakota. If you have an outbreak in a county that you could directly attribute to a particular facility, in this case, the, the Smithfield Foods Company, right? 18 million servings of pork they produce every single day. I account for a bunch of those. Okay? Nice. Um, you got to get that. You got to get that sausage, Joe. Um, but if you're a governor and you're looking and say, well, we know where the problem is there. We know the problem is in that county. And we know the problem has to do with Smithfield Foods. Why would you shut down the entire rest of the state? Now, the only reason I bring that up is Trump is saying the same thing. You, know, you have all these people that are basically castigating some of these governors who want to open up their states and who have not, let's say, put in place shutdown orders. Okay, Places like Wyoming, where I think one person died. 
I think one no. person lives in the state, Joe. Uh, well, it is, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's maybe two. But the thing is, when you say, when you say like Trump looks at the map of the United States and says New York's a problem, New Jersey's a problem, California's a problem, we've got a problem in Louisiana, we've got a problem in Illinois. Okay, and then, the, and then you focus on some of those areas. Why do you have to shut down the entire nation? In other words, you understand why they're so nefarious? You're trying to pressure him and shame him, and they do use words like he's unscientific. He's a, he's a coronavirus denier. You know, like there's Holocaust deniers, there's, um, there's uh, uh, climate change deniers. He's a coronavirus denier because they want the whole country on lockdown so that they can get their way. They have all their arguments ready, all the names that they're going to call him, all ready to go. They say, well, um, they say, well, you know, he's a denier. Why didn't he shut down the whole country? Because the whole country doesn't need to be shut down. Don't you get it? In the case of South Dakota, the whole state doesn't need to be shut down. A stay-at-home order is not going to do them, not going to make them fair any better than they're already fair because they know exactly where the problem is. I just, these people, they, they, the reason why it's so important that we continue, and we say, always say this on the front line with Joe and Joe, for all you people to hear, the reason why we have to continue to talk the way we do and to boldly proclaim the truth and expose them for all their lies, all their tactics, all their goals that, they, that they're trying to impose on us, is because, they, uh, because we have to say it to let them know we know what they're doing. We know what you're doing, and we're not going to let you do it. Joe, have you seen the protests? In Michigan, there's been a number of them. I doubt okay. those. Michigan today, I was looking up uh, in between our interview with um, with uh, with Captain Phillips, okay, and and this show at the front line with Joe and Joe. Um, I was looking at some things that they posted on uh, on um, on Facebook. Uh, I, one of our friends, Joe Campo, over in Brooklyn, he posted live uh, in Ohio. They're doing the same thing. They're saying stop. They're saying stop. You're not shutting me down. You're not keeping me out of work. You can't, you cannot make this into the epidemic that you want it to be with the numbers that are, that are coming out. Okay. We need to get back to work. That, that governor with me, are we going over her at all today? No, no, we're going to do that uh, crusade. All right. Well, just to mention governor, governor Whitmer, she's got, she's got rules in place where if you own two homes, you can't go from one to the other in the state of Michigan. I know. Dude, she's another one. She's that woman makes me shiver. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you something. My goodness. Let me tell you something. I, I, when I was a kid, I used to shiver at the Wicked Witch of the West. I used to watch Wizard of Oz every year. OK. And the w Wicked Witch of the West used to make me used to make me quake. OK. She's right up there. Gretchen Whitmer is right up there with the Wicked Witch of the West. Dude, we should throw. I guarantee you, just like when they threw water on the witch in, in uh, the Wizard of Oz. She the same thing would happen if we threw holy water on her. She just like shrivel up. Either that run away say, I'm on fire! <laughs> That's exactly what would happen. And, and, and the thing is, what people don't realize is that, um, well, Stephen just, uh, I just want to let you know, Stephen just commented in, he said, Huntington Beach in California had a protest. So, like, even in California, they're, they're having a, people are tired of this. But interestingly enough, Joe Resinello, when I said Phil Murphy was on with uh, Tucker Carlson the other night, okay, Tucker Carlson asked him point blank, he said, how do you square this with the Bill of Rights? He said, um, he said, when he, what did he say? He goes, when I did the, when I took these measures, I wasn't thinking about the Bill of Rights. Well, that's telling um, in between him saying God 700 times because he's trying to play to the base. It's so pathetic as if people don't see right through that. He thinks we're idiots. He said and, look, he was saying using language like like they use for the Titanic. Like if you talk to somebody who's old and they'll, you say how many people died on the Titanic, they say like, let's say it was a thousand. They say a thousand souls were lost in the Titanic. He kept using the he kept using the words blessed souls. And again, I'm going to say it and you'll say it over and over again. Okay, what about the blessed souls of the babies you allowed to be slaughtered no, in the it's, womb? It's just sickening. I, like, I can't even, to be honest with you, with stuff like that, again, he thinks we're idiots. Right. I don't know how anyone could take that man seriously. Yeah. On any level. He's so full of crap that it's absurd. Yeah. That it's absurd. But that's another discussion. I mean, like, and you know something? I don't even talk New Jersey politics because New Jersey is a lost cause. No one wants to hear it. 
until it goes bankrupt because everyone has their union ticket in their hand and they're going to hold it as the Titanic just goes directly under the water and we get pennies on the dollar on our pensions. They don't want to hear it. It's not even worth your time. New Jersey is a lost cause. Well, right let me tell you, just to put, and then we'll move on to the next topic, but just to put a final point on it, I have no sympathy for all, the, I, 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 we respect union workers. We want them to be protected. I have no sympathy for any union worker who keeps voting Democrat, knowing that that's all they do is they keep raising taxes, raising taxes, raising taxes to pay those, those, those packages to all of them, all the unionized workforce, uh, public sector workforce in New Jersey, okay? When their pensions are worth pennies on the dollar. It's gonna happen. I'm not gonna cry, I'm not crying for them. No, I'll it's, pay for them, but I won't, I'm not crying for them. It, like I said, I don't wanna get off course, but that's New Jersey, waste of time, sad state. Yes. Uh, anybody in the chat room to uh, give a shout out? Uh, well, Stephen's active in the chat room today. Um, <laughs> he goes, he goes. Uh, Pelosi's the wicked witch of the West. He goes, Whitmer's the wicked witch of the East. <laughs> yes, she scares me. Scares the crap out of me. Well, Joseph, uh, the King Barack Obama finally endorsed Joe Biden this week. I did a. I, did, I came up with a new name. I did a little preview earlier today on on, the, on Facebook Live to say we were going to be going on at three o'clock, and I called him Barack Obiden. Well, there it is. I, I think that I, I think that I, should think stick. Perfect. That should perfect. That, that should be a bumper sticker. And yeah, after Barack I read you, after I read you the quote, I think you'll uh, think it even more so. All right. This is what he said. I believe Joe has all the qualities we need in the president right now. Now, of course he had to take a little swipe at the Donald indirectly. So let me right. read. Our country's future hangs on this election and it won't be easy. The other side has a massive war chest. The other side has a propaganda network with little regard for the truth. On the other hand, this is great. Pandemics have a way of cutting through a lot of noise and spin to remind us of what is real and what is important. The crisis has reminded us that government matters. It's reminded us that good government matters. The facts and science matter. That the rule of law matters. That having leaders who are informed and honest and seek to bring people together rather than drive them apart, those kind of leaders matter. Mm -hmm. And then our good friend, Mr. Biden tweets back and says, Barack, this endorsement means the world to Jill and me. This is what I want everyone to pay attention to. We're going to build on the progress we made together. And there's no one I'd rather have standing by my side. So let's cut through the bull. You vote for Joe Biden. It's a second presidency for Barack O'Biden. Yeah. Barack O'Biden. Period. Period. It's the same iteration. And by the way, Joe Biden is partially out of it. Barack Obama working through Tom Perez, who he placed as the head of the DNC, will be almost the de facto president. They're going to, and I'm going to go on record again, Joe Pasillo, Kamala Harris will be the vice president nom nominee. I'm going to say it again. I know that's yours. I'm going to say, I'm going to still say Pete Buttigieg so we can okay. get the first guy president. That's what's on their mind. However, whoever it is, that's the person there behind. Joe Biden is the puppet. And Barack Obama, working through Tom Perez, will have a big say in that administration. If you're comfortable with that, pull the lever. I'm not. I mean, it's just, and the amazing thing too is, has anybody actually asked Joe Biden point blank? Like, number, let's break down, let's, let's break down Barry's statement a little bit, okay? Can we call him Barry? Sure. Call him, call him Barry. He used to hey, call Barry. himself Barry in high school because he was right. embarrassed so of calling himself Barry. The Rock, but right. we'll, we'll, we'll call him Barry. Yeah, a couple of his, a couple of his Ivy League buddies, you know, they referred to him as Barry. Okay, he's Barry, okay, whatever. Um, let's break it down a little bit. 
has anybody asked Joe Biden directly right to his face in an interview, what would you be doing differently than Donald Trump? And then just shut up. What would you be do what would you have done differently starting from January 21st? We want to know what you would have done differently. You're running for president. See, when CNN wants to talk, they want to talk about, like, get, let's get into, this will tie into Barack Obama's second statement. You want to talk about propaganda machine, because he's obviously talking about Fox News, okay? Which is, I don't care. Uh, you, even if you conceded it was a propaganda machine, okay? What's CNN? What's MSNBC? What's Chris Matthews, Rachel Maddow, Don Lamont? Remember, it's Lamont, it's Lamont. Don, Don Lamont, okay? And all these people. What are they but propaganda? They don't ask Biden the tough questions. Has anybody asked him from January 21st, what would you have done if you were in Donald Trump's shoes? Well, He's I'm going to answer that answer. question for you. I'll tell you exactly what he would not have done, and I would bet money on it. He would never, ever have restricted travel to China January 31st ever because the World Health Organization said he shouldn't. And there right. is no way that Joe Biden would have bucked that organization. In addition, he never, ever would have put a travel restriction on Europe, ever. Mm -hmm. And Donald Trump did. Yeah. That's a fact. Believe right. it. Right. Now, if you want to talk about Oh, we have to worry about lives. Everything is we have to worry about American lives. Good. Shutting down China and shutting down Europe saved American lives. That's a statement of fact. And you're right. Joe Biden is, 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 is no, um, no nationalist. He's a globalist. He's in the globalist party. He's a globalist. Okay. No way he would have, like you said, would have bucked the WHO. Okay. I love, as a result of this, by the way, where, where Trump turns around, because you can see Whenever you want to understand or, or, or determine if somebody says something that's that's got a level of truth to it or is completely true, true, look at the reaction of the left to that action. Trump said we're going to pull all our funding from the WHO. We want an investigation. We covered it a couple of weeks ago. Lindsey Graham says we want an investigation. There won't be any money. You got a. Uh, um, I Russian Taylor from Pennsylvania and others. They're calling for an investigation. OK, uh, into the WHO and the shrill voices on the left are, 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 are it's like it's like little girls screaming because they got sent to their room and they got their they got their iPod taken, their, 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 their iPhone taken away from them. OK, that's how they stop. You're not scientific. What does that have to do with it? WHO what does that corrupt? mean? Right, what actually? does that mean? WHO is corrupt. China's corrupt. We're not giving them any more money until we get to the bottom of the corruption. That is a that is a, a, a statement, a, a true statement. They're corrupt. We're not paying anymore. What's wrong with that? Biden would have never have done that. He would never, ever, ever have done that. He wouldn't have done, he wouldn't have done anything that Donald Trump is doing. And we'd be in worse shape. If for no other reason, for the reasons you pointed out, he wouldn't have shut down Europe, he wouldn't have shut down travel from China. That's a fact. And we'd be and we'd have more dead of it that's a fact because in all honesty that took a serious set to do like donald trump or not and there is no way barack obama would have done that and there's no way that joe biden would have done that you're fact. right sorry right, right. so to, so let's tell barry that we don't really care about his opinion anymore he should do the classy thing like like george w bush Okay, and prior presidents, he should shut up in this oh, election. One hundred percent. He should shut up. He had his eight years. History will judge him. Joe and Joe don't have to judge him. History will judge his presidency. He's done. Somebody else is in power. Okay, but he can't because he's a leftist elitist. He's no moderate. He's no reasonable voice. He's a leftist elitist, that, and he has very specific goals in mind, and taking down Trump is part of those goals. That's why he won't shut his mouth. He, he is the opposite of class, the opposite. Well, the next story, Joe, I think may put you over the edge. I'm already over the edge. At the front line with Joe and Joe, Joe Pasillo and Joe Resinello, and we are in the breach Saturday afternoon on Facebook Live. And Connie's joining us. Hey, Connie, what's happening? And Connie, thank you for uh, sending us the uh, blessed palms. For yes, Connie, thank you. And my wife, thanks you. Yes, thank awesome. You. Thank you.
and give your husband Doug a shout. Tell him, uh, I know he stands behind us. When the revolution begins, I know where to go in Florida. <laughs> Come on, Joe, the revolution has begun. I know, I keep a pitchfork under my desk at work. I'm ready, I'm ready. Uh, the headline, Joe P, get ready. Oh God. The New York Times is clear. No pattern of sexual misconduct by Biden. Let me read it to you just a little bit and then we'll have a discussion. And I, in all seriousness, I want people to pay attention to this. This is disgraceful. All you people who claim to be feminists who sit on the left side of the political aisle, you should be ashamed of yourself on this. Ashamed. Let me read. The New York Times published an account of Tara Reid's allegations of sexual misconduct against the then Senator Joe Biden of Delaware, concluding that there was no pattern of sexual misconduct by Biden beyond hugs, kisses, and touching that women previously said made them uncomfortable. What? Let me continue. Please. Reed filed a criminal complaint last week in Washington, DC, alleging that in 1993, when she worked for Biden as a staffer, he pushed her up against the wall and forcibly penetrated her with his fingers, according to a report by Business Insider. Biden, Biden has denied this allegation. Now, unlike the Brett Kavanaugh allegation, there are people that could substantiate this claim Reed told the details of the allegation at the time to another friend and a brother. That did not take place when Brett Kavanaugh was accused. Not, not one of her friends would substantiate or could substantiate her claim. And every single person in the media blamed that man mm -hmm. and called him things that were just unspeakable. And they hadn't have one shred of evidence other than somebody making a wild accusation that was pushed by the Senate. Right. What a disgrace. Right. And the thing is, but it's like we always talk about. Listen, Joe, if I know that you control the narrative because you're the media, then I really could say whatever I want because I know that you're going to do your best to, to, to shelter me, to spin what I said. So they, the thing about the left is they could take so many more chances than the right can. Because if Donald Trump walks from here to there and stumbles and stubs his toe, all right, they'll call for his impeachment in the press, okay, in the mainstream media. And they get away with it. Everybody who's, got, who's rational knows, okay, that, uh, that there was no, there, the, the allegations against Kavanaugh were, were baseless. Okay, but they're and not rational. And right. I, Joe, because I went to war with people on social media on this. I mm -hmm. seriously, I went to war. They're not rational. Where are those voices now? No. Where are those voices? And here's another thing. What this man is accused of doing, you go to jail for. This is a criminal, criminal offense. You go right. to jail for this. Mm -hmm. Where are they now? Where are, where's Alyssa Milano? Where, where are all of them? Where's Hillary Clinton? Where are they? So remember something, remember something about all the different groups that make up this left-wing coalition in this country. And I've been saying this for, for a very long time, okay? They are leftists first. They are ideologues first. What do I mean by that? Clarence Thomas was a black man. He was he's a black man. He was treated terribly by the United States Senate. Terribly. Okay. And not one black leader came to his defense. Why? Because they're not, they're not black first, they're leftist first. And Thomas is conservative. If you look at, let's say we covered a story a few months ago on the front line with Joe and Joe, uh, Andy Nago, who's a gay man, a gay conservative. He went to he went to I think it was Seattle or Portland. Yeah, Portland. Portland, uh, Antifa beat the crap out of him. Okay, where was all the, the loud voices in the in, in the in the in the LGBT rage mob that came to his defense? 
They were nowhere to be found. Why? Because they're leftists first. They're not gay first. They're leftists first. Fast forward to this, okay? Kavanaugh's accuser, we have to believe her. Biden's accuser, we need due process for, for Joe. Joe deserves due process. Now, how? Why? Let's stop because there. Because they're leftists first. How can't somebody see that that's a problem? Like, let's step away and let's put down our tribal hat. Okay. How is that not a problem? It is. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you who it's a problem for. People like us. People that don't. That they never. I never get a phone call to poll me on 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 Trump's approval rating. I don't know who they call in this country to get the approval ratings. Okay. Underneath, because of social media. OK, mostly because of social media. I'll give Fox News a little bit of credit, mostly because of social media. OK, and I will credit Fox News with this. They are a counterweight to CNN, even though Fox News has a lot of problems. They still are. They will still cover stories in a way and cover stories in general uh, that CNN and the rest of them won't cover. So they are useful and conservative talk radio underneath it all, Joe, the people, the people of America, they see this hypocrisy. The media's approval rating is 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 in the single digits in this country. They have no credibility. Okay, for the reason that you just said, you said, who would think this way? We do. We know the truth of these things. That's why, even though it thinks it, we feel sometimes like it's a losing battle, it's not. Remember something in 2016. Before they started calling us deplorable, they were calling the people of England deplorable because they wanted to break away from the European Union. Well, they actually voted for that and they broke away from the European Union. Same thing in America. They know that they're not getting through to us. And that's what has them scared because we're going to go out in droves. And not only are we going to vote for Donald Trump, we're going to vote down ticket. We're going to get out there. In other words, because the bottom line is this, not because he's a savior. Jesus Christ is our only savior, but because they truly are the enemy of Americans. They are the enemy of America. They're, they themselves, their radical agenda and the media, they know this, okay? They know that they're trying to pull a fast one on us, and they are so frustrated because we're not letting them do it. The New York Times does not control the narrative anymore, okay? The Washington Post does not control the narrative, okay? ABC, NBC, and CBS do not control the narrative, all right? Because there are other ways people get their news and their information, and that's what they can't stand. We're the people that are going to go out on, in, in 2020 on November 3rd, I think it is this year, and we're going to go and vote for him again. And they can call us all the names we want. I don't really care, but we're going to go out and we're going to vote for him again. So to your point, Joe, they're, they're mostly preaching to a choir, to their own choir, because people like us are not listening to them. Let's go to our last story of the day. I think this one is interesting. It made me sort of chuckle. I want to throw out one. I just want to throw out one thing at the front line with Joe and Joe, Joe Pasillo, Joe Resinello, Saturday afternoon, three o'clock. We welcome you all and all, all our new friends and all of our, our new subscribers on Facebook. And Joe, I just wanted to mention, um, and Dan, Dan's with us today. He said, I never met a person who was polled, and I meet a lot of people. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. Because I've never met anybody who was polled by Reuters, by Zogby, uh, by um you know, Hofstra, Quinnipiac. I've never, ever met anybody who was polled at all for any race whatsoever, any political question in this country. They're Just probably like going into like a Starbucks and polling people with like red hair and a goopaline on their head in, in July. Well, you, now you're going to have to explain to everybody what a goopaline is. Goopaline is a wool hat. That's wool what hat. an old Italian woman calls a wool hat, a wool hat. Yeah, and she says, to make sure you wear your goopaline. Exactly. <laughs> Underneath that goopaline is purple hair and a tattoo on your neck. That's who they're polling. Right. That's right. Our last story of the day. This one's a doozy. This one made me chuckle because I followed it as it unfolded. I'm going to kind of report it as it uh, as 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 an aggregate. But um, I followed it as it is unfolded. And I was shocked. But then when uh, they kind of real he reeled it back, I wasn't shocked. Basically, here's the headline. Will the real Chris Cuomo please stand up? Chris Cuomo recently expressed frustration with his job at CNN and then the next day walked it back. 
Let me give you the first quote, and then I'm going to give you the quote the following day, and then we'll have an, an interesting discussion. Okay. This is, what, this is what he said. I don't like what I do professionally. I've decided. I don't value indulging irrationality, hyperpartisanship. I don't think it's worth my time anymore. That's day one. Day two, this is what he said the next day. This is after the call from Zucker. Correct. Oh, okay. of course, of course, of course. It's not true. I never said it. I never meant it. He went on. I have never been in a better position professionally. CNN has been so good. I've never been on a better team. Dude, is this dude schizophrenic? I mean, I, I applauded him. So I did I. Him. That's what I'm saying. It was like a roller coaster. I mean, he, he even got, he even, he must, I think he said it originally on his radio show. Am I right? Yeah, it, it, that, exactly. So he made it clear what his views were, how he felt about his role at CNN and what he does. He said, it's, I don't need the money. All right. Obviously, he's been getting paid really yeah, good bucks. for a long time. I'm sure the family after Mario Cuomo extorted the state of New York has, as you know, you know, money buried, buried in the mattress. OK, um, from when Mario Cuomo was governor. So uh, it's not the money. So he made it clear. It's almost like I, I respected him because he was seemed like kind of free to be able to offer his opinion as to what he does, which is he says he's entertaining irrationality. And I'm sure he's not only talking about conservatives. OK, and then in 24 hours, I mean, what kind of phone call could he have possibly gotten? Did Jeff Zucker threaten to fire him? Well, he you said yesterday that you didn't need the money. It's not about that. You do great. OK, so what, what did he threaten to kill you? I, I think that? he drank a 12 pack and dropped the tab of acid, actually. Well, how do you I mean, <laughs> and just, had a, and just had a moment of, of clarity? He had a moment of clarity where he realized I just really lie for a living. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that the talking heads, some of the talking heads, not all of them on Fox and other places don't do the same thing. I'm not suggesting that. OK, there, uh, so many of them are paid to push an agenda. That's why I like Tucker Carlson, because Tucker Carlson seems to be the type of guy. I'm going to speak the truth. If you fire me, you fire me. If you don't, you don't. This is my show. OK, um, and to a little bit of a lesser degree, but the same way I feel about Laura Ingram. But but. Hannity and some other, they push a narrative, so I get it. I'm not faulting him for that. But you just got done saying the night before on your radio show that you don't value what you do because you're entertaining irrationality and that you don't need the money. And then here you are. And then he's got the balls to say, I I didn't say it. Well, sorry, Chris, you actually, you did like say I said, it. I, it's almost like he was schizophrenic. Um, it seems that way. Like, because like I said, I followed it. I kind of like aggregated both both statements. I when he first said it, it hit the news, and I read it, and I was like, "Wow, did this guy just red pill? Did this guy just have a moment where he just said, listen, I don't need this nonsense. I'm a rich guy. I come from a powerful family. I'm not doing this anymore.'" And then he slept on it and was basically like, holy crap, I make $5 million a year. I got my house in Southampton. I live in Manhattan. My kids go to $50,000 grammar schools each, um, each kid each year, dropping 150 k on his three kids. You know, has a $2,000 stroller. Um, his wife, she goes to lunch and spends $500 a day at lunch and goes to the gym, has a personal trainer and spends probably more money on clothes in a week than you and I probably spend in a calendar year right. on a lot of essential things. Uh, and said, and that, all hit, and that all hit him. Maybe that, <laughs> maybe that all just came, came driving down on his head. Do you remember, do you remember the movie Jerry Maguire? I do. Okay, it's, it's one of the only movies that I like Tom Cruise in. I've never been a Tom Cruise fan, but I'm a big fan of Jerry Maguire. Okay, I see a real Christian message. Uh, in that movie. I'm being serious, okay? And I was always felt very inspired by it. But he had a Jerry Maguire moment. He wrote the memo the night before while the Jerry, Jerry Maguire wrote the memo in his hotel room. He had some cold pizza. And he, it went to his head and he wrote this beautiful memo about he doesn't like what he does and he's extorting these players and we need to have fewer players and, uh, and, 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 and less money and really concentrate on people. And he sends it out as a mission statement, wakes up the next day and says, 
what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? But you know, that's what happened to Chris Cuomo. And you want to know something? I'm going to tell you something. I've told you this before. I, I obviously, as Catholics, we pray, in other words, for the conversion of all people. Okay, all people. All right. And we all have the people that we like to mention specifically. I have a list of people that I mentioned specifically. I'm adding Chris Cuomo to my list because I think that he could be, he could have a Jerry Maguire outcome, which is he realizes at some point he's, he spins a lot of nonsense. I get the feeling he's not as liberal as his brother. Okay. Maybe even so on abortion and some other issues too. I get the feeling it's a gut feeling. I can't substantiate it. I'd like to see him have, have that, have that kind of an outcome where he turns around to CNN and says, you know what? I don't agree with all this stuff and I'm leaving. I would love to see that. And, well, I, know, and, I, and I pray that I don't know what his standing in the church is. I don't know what he thinks about church teaching. Um, he's obviously not as vocal as his brother, but if he's outside of church teaching, I pray that he, he gets his head on the screen. But in, but in a serious note, what it also, I think, puts uh, a finer point on um, is the lack of freedom a lot of these people have. Chris Cuomo is not free at all. Well, this proves it. That's my point. This that is my it. point. He is not free. And so, and, and that's the case for so many people out there. They're right. not free. Like you and I, we're not, we're, we're not beholden to anybody. Like we report the truth as it is. Right. The facts. We don't have commercials. We don't get paid. Right. We, this is a public service announcement. This is a right. public service announcement from North Jersey from two crazy Italian people. That's what we That's do. That's the way we like it. That cat is not free. And that should be basically, you know, highlighted to everyone. He had a moment where he felt free and then he just backed it right back up. You know what yeah. he should do? You know what he should do? If he, if, if the Chris Cuomo from the radio show is the one telling the truth and not the one the next day, and he really doesn't like what he does, and he says, I'm a journalist, like he told the guy who called him Fredo, he, he, he goes, he goes, I'm a journalist. I, you know, I'm a successful journalist, blah, blah, blah. If, if, if the Chris Cuomo from the night before is the true Chris Cuomo, he should quit CNN. He should go to CNN and say, I want to have, I want to be like, I'll give you an example, like Chris Wallace on Fox News. Chris Wallace seems to me, seems to me to be a straight down the middle journalist. If you're a Republican and a conservative, if you're a liberal and a Democrat, it doesn't matter. He's going to ask you questions in a very objective way, and they're going to be hard hitting questions. Okay. Chris Cuomo, if he really values, it seems to me, wants to be like somebody like that, he should go into Jeff Zucker's office and say, I want that kind of show on CNN. And I'm going to hit them both hard. He'd get fired. Oh, that's a lot. He'd get fired. But the beautiful thing is he is in a position to be free because he's very, very, very wealthy. Maybe he'll take a significant pay, pay uh, cut. He still would make a good living. Sure. And he would probably enjoy his job a lot more. And that's, I think, a good way to conclude the show. You yeah. have to be true to yourself. I mean, let's look at what the man said. He said, basically, in so many words, you know, I don't like what I do. We do our jobs. We spend a lot of time doing our work. If you don't know, if you don't like what you do, there's a, there's a decent chance you don't like who you are. That said, he doesn't have to do that. Neither do you, good listeners out there. We have to be true to ourselves. True to ourselves. And in doing that, you have peace. And in doing that, you have internal joy. And in doing that, you have a good life. That's right. You're happy. Message to you, Mr. Cuomo. Very, that's a great way to end the show, Joe Restinello. And we want to thank you all for joining us here at the front line with Joe and Joe. Joe Pasol and Joe Restinello. Remember to uh, please follow us on Facebook um, and uh, hit the little follow button and like button. And we have all our videos on there and a lot of great interviews, including one that we did this morning that's posted there with um, Captain George Phillips. Uh, and the subject was Father Vincent Capadano and hopefully his, uh, his, his canonization in the near future. Um, and please follow us on YouTube. Uh, you can just go in the search bar on YouTube and hit the front line with Joe and Joe and our ugly mugs will come up. 
and you could subscribe to us there. We'd ask you to do so and hit the little bell so you're notified. And also, uh, I didn't mention earlier, but please like us or, or please, we would uh, encourage you to subscribe to the Crusade channel, okay? Not only just because Joe and I are on there, all right, but Mike Church has a phenomenal channel. It is a subscriber-based channel. It's not expensive at all, uh, where you can get a lot of great content like Mike Church, Rick Barrett, um, us, uh, Aaron Barker, a, a great slate uh, at the Crusade channel. So check that out also. And uh, Aaron, yeah, and uh, please like and share our, our, our videos if you so choose with your friends. Having said that, no, I just want to say, too, about the Crusade channel, I believe right now he's running a special. You get 30 days free. There you go. So you don't have any excuse. Mike Church is on every morning. And if you want a really great breakdown of a lot of stuff that's going on out there in our in our country, Mike Church is the guy to listen to. Uh, so great, Joe. I forgot about that. Thank you. So remember that our conversation, that is your conversation, and that conversation, it's going on everywhere. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening.